In springtime, Rusty loves to visit a faraway place. It's filled with bluebells. The air smells sweet and Rusty thinks there is no better place to be. One day, Thomas was passing by just as Rusty was having a drink. Beep, beep, good morning, whistled Thomas. Your driver looks a little worried. I wonder why. I don't know, said Rusty, but I soon will. Excuse me, said Rusty, but is something wrong? Yes, indeed, replied the driver. They need another engine to help run this special line. A bluebell engine, laughed Rusty. Maybe I can find one. Later, Rusty saw Douglas and Percy. Rusty had an idea. Can you help me find another engine? Well, where you found Oliver? You mean on the other railway? Yes, I'm looking for a bluebell engine, said Rusty, and explained everything. I'd like to help, but these days it's only diesels that go there. Then Rusty decided, so that's where I'll go. Take Care, warned Douglas. Rusty told the driver all about the plan. And that night he came back to the shed. The manager says he'll make a home for a bluebell engine if you find one. Right, said Rusty. We'll find one tomorrow. It took them all of the next day to travel to the other railway. Darkness fell and the cold wind blew. Ooh, what's that? murmured Rusty. But it was only the sounds of the lonely scrapyard. Diesels, silent and still, lined up on guard. Who are you? Rusty plucked up courage. I'm a shed and sidings inspection diesel. Have you any engines in the shed? No, no. Rusty rallied again. Then, er, uh, what about the sidings? One. We have one. Rusty grew braver still. Then I'll just go and inspect. A small engine with a tall funnel stood sad and alone in the shadowy siding. His driver was huddled in the cab, keeping him company. Excuse me, said Rusty. Do you like bluebells? The engine looked startled. Yes, bluebells are beautiful. Then you're soon going to see lots of them because I'm getting you out of here. Everyone worked fast. It was difficult to set the fire, but soon it was glowing hot and Stepney had a good head of steam. Rusty's engineer agreed to be Stepney's fireman. So off they set, past the bleak and brooding line of diesels. Where is he going? They hissed. Just down the line, replied Rusty. And they chuffered quickly away. It. We're over the border and back on our own railway. Mission accomplished. When Rusty and the engine arrived in the valley, a big welcome awaited them. We shall mend you and give you a new coat of paint, said the manager. His driver was delighted. You lucky old engine. You've been saved by the Bluebell Railway. And my friend Rusty, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Rusty. Now the little engine is as happy as can be and helps all the passengers who visit at Bluebell time. His name is Stepney, but everyone calls him the Bluebell Engine. Duncan would not stop grumbling. He grumbled that he wasn't polished enough. He grumbled that he was overworked. Most of all, he grumbled about the passengers. I'm ashamed of you, Duncan, said Scarlowey. Thank goodness Reneus is coming home soon. Perhaps he'll teach you some sense before it's too late. What has Reneus to do with me? Reneus saved our railway, replied Scarlowey. <laughs> <laughs>
Please tell us about it, said Peter Sam. Well, began Scar Lowy, it was before you came here. Things were bad. Reneus and I had to keep the trains running or our railway would have to close. How awful, murmured Peter Sam. I tried hard, continued Scar Lowy, but my old wheels ached. Reneus understood. It's my turn now, he'd tell me. He was often short of steam, but he always struggled to a station and rested there. I mustn't stop between stations, he'd say. The passengers wouldn't like it. Sure, huffed Duncan. He had stopped on a viaduct and hadn't cared at all. Passengers, continued Scar Lowy, get cross if you stop at the wrong places. Reneus stopped in a wrong place once, and this is what happened. One wet and windy afternoon when the rails were damp, Reneus was travelling home with a full train. There were even passengers in the guard's van. It wasn't a comfortable ride at all. Reneus's wheels kept slipping, and it was a steep climb. At last, his wheels gripped the rails again. The worst is over, he thought. Now we're away. But they weren't. Ah! I've got cramp, he groaned. And Reneus stopped on the loneliest part of the line. His driver examined him carefully. Your valve gear has jammed. We need to reach the next station. Do you think you can still get us there? I'll try, replied Reneus. Reneus did his best. If I fail, he thought to himself, the passengers will be cross and the railway will close. Everything blurred. He was really too tired to make another turn of his wheels. But he did. And another, and another, and another. Finally, tired but triumphant, Reneus reached the station. I'm here at last, he wheezed. Thank you for getting us home, said the passengers. We'll tell all our friends what a fine railway this is. His driver was delighted. You're a gallant little engine, he said to Reneus. When you're rested, we'll mend you so you'll be ready for tomorrow. And, smiled Scarlowy, Reneus was always ready for tomorrow. Thank you for telling us about him, whispered Duncan. I was wrong. Passengers are important after all. The next day, Reneus came home. All the engines were there to greet him. Edward pushed his truck to the siding where he was lifted onto his rails. This was the signal for a chorus of whistles from engines large and small. Everyone was happy, and Reneus was the happiest of all. You know, he whispered to Scar Lowy, this helps a little engine to feel that at last he has really come home. Sir Handel is very proud of his big sturdy wheels. They have broad tyres and hold well to the rails, but they are unusual. One day, the other engines wouldn't stop teasing him. Look at his steamroller wheels, they joked. Be quiet, snorted Sir Handel. You're jealous. Don't worry, soothed Peter Sam. The engines all tease me about my special funnel until they learned how useful it is. Did you hear that? Off Sir Handel. My wheels are special like Peter Sam's funnel. I can go faster than any of you. Scar Lowy had a plan to make Sir Handel see sense. With your grand wheels, Sir Handel, said Scar Lowy, you're just the engine to tackle George. Who's George? That steamroller over there, replied Scar Lowy. 
listen. The steamroller was making rude remarks about the engines. Railways are no good, turn them into roads, pull them up, turn them into road. Railways are no good, turn them into roads, pull them up, turn them into roads. Don't worry, said Sir Handel. Leave him to me, I'll send him packing. George will soon get a run for his money. Later that morning, George was at the level crossing. Huh, he said. You're Sir Handel, I suppose. Sir Handel was standing no nonsense. And you, I suppose, are George, yes. I've heard of you. And I've heard of you. You swank around with your steamroller wheels pretending you're as good as me. Actually, retorted Sir Handel, I'm better. Goodbye. George chuffed on fuming. Later that day, Sir Handel brought a special load down after the last train had gone. When he reached the road, he saw George trundling home. Sir Handel tried to attract his attention. Peep, pip, peep. George took no notice. There was barely room to pass. Sir Handel was cross. Get out of my way, you great clumsy road hog. Huh. I don't move for imitation steamrollers, huffed George. They lumbered along as the insults continued. Then there was trouble. Oh, cried Sir Handel. That was your fault. No, it wasn't. It was yours. Everyone was arguing about who was to blame. Hello, 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 said a policeman ominously. And what's going on here? This made everyone stop arguing. They set to work clearing up the mess instead. Next day, the workmen put up a fence between the road and the railway. Then they went away, taking George with them. Sir Handel thought he had made George go away. He talked of nothing but steamrollers. Oh dear, whispered Scarlowy. He's worse than ever. I'm sorry my plan was no good. Never mind, said Rusty. We'll think of something else. But they had no need to do that. Some boys arrived instead. They pointed to the engine and cried, Look, here's Sir Handel. He tried to race a steamroller. But the steamroller nearly beat him. Sir Handel never mentions steamrollers now. Nancy is a guard's daughter. One day she was working on Scar Lowy with some polish and a rag. Scar Lowy was snoozing happily, but Nancy wanted to talk. Wake up, lazy bones! Your brass is filthy. Aren't you ashamed? No, yawned Scar Lowy. You're just an old fusspot. And Scarlow, he closed his eyes. He was thinking about his friend, Reneus, and all the good times they had shared together before Reneus went away to be mended. Nancy interrupted again. Don't you want to look nice for when Reneus comes home? Scarlow, he wasn't sleepy anymore. What? When? Soon, Daddy told me, I'm going now, she said. Nancy, stop! Do I really look nice? Please, polish me again. Now who's an old fuss pup, laughed Nancy, and set to work once more. Duncan was jealous. Aren't you going to polish me too? Sorry, not today. I'm going now. I'm helping the refreshment lady this afternoon. We must get the ices ready for the passengers. Never mind, Duncan, she said. But Duncan did mind. It isn't fair, he complained. 
Peter Sam gets a special funnel, Sir Handel gets special wheels, passengers get ices, but I'm not even polished. Of course, this wasn't true, but Duncan enjoyed complaining. He became sulkier still. That afternoon, there was bad news from up the line. One of Scarlowe's coaches has come off the rails, called Duncan's driver. We'll have to take the workmen there right away. All this extra work, grumbled Duncan. It wears an engine out. Rubbish. Come on. The derailed coach was in the middle of Scarlowe's train. So he had gone on to the top station with his front coaches. Duncan shunted the works train into the sidings and left the workmen to sort out the mess. Then he brought the passengers and the rear coaches home. He sulked all the way. I get no rest, I get no rest, he muttered. Duncan made the journey very difficult. He was short of steam, so his driver waited a while in the hope of raising more. But Duncan wouldn't try. We'll keep our passengers waiting, said his driver. Duncan was cross. You always think about the passengers and never about me. It wasn't long before Duncan built up enough steam to set off again. But he was still very grumpy and cross. I'm overworked and I won't stand it. At last, they reached the viaduct near the station. Come on, Duncan, cajoled his driver. One more effort and you'll have a rest and a drink at the station. Duncan was very rude. Keep your old station. I'm staying here. And he did too. Scarlowe had to haul Duncan and his train all the way to the platform. The passengers were furious. They told everyone what a bad railway it was. That night, the fat controller spoke to Duncan. No passengers means no polish. No polish means no passengers, Duncan muttered to himself. He still has a lot to learn, doesn't he? Scar Lowy and Reneus work on the railway that weaves around the lakes and mountainsides. The coaches are filled with visitors and the engines are proud to run the line come rain or shine. The engines will never let their passengers down, but they are old and tire more easily. Their drivers understood this, and they spoke kindly to them. There's more than enough work for you both on this railway. The manager is sending two more engines to help us run the line. Scar Lowy and Reneus were pleased with this news and promised to give the new engines a big welcome. When Sir Handel and Peter Sam arrived, they found they had much to learn. What a small shed, grunted Sir Handel. This won't do at all. We're much too smart for this old shack. I think it's nice, said Peter Sam. Huh, replied Sir Handel. What's that rubbish? Shh, said Peter Sam. That's Scar Lowy. He's famous. And he whispered to Scar Lowy. I'm sorry, Scar Lowy. Sir Handel's upset now. But he's quite nice, really. Scar Lowy felt sorry for Peter Sam. Now, Sir Handel, said the fireman, I will get you ready for work. I'm tired. Let Peter Sam go. 
He'd love it. No, you're first. Sir Handel puffed away to fetch his coaches. He didn't like the look of them at all. Whatever next. Those aren't coaches, they're cattle trucks. Ooh! Screamed the coaches. What a horrid engine. It's not what I'm used to, blank Sir Handel. He rolled to the platform just as Gordon arrived. Hello, who are you? I'm Gordon. Who are you? I'm Sir Handel. I've heard of you. You're an express engine. So am I, but I'm used to smart coaches, not these cattle trucks. Do you have smart coaches? I see you do. We must have a chat. Sorry, I can't stop. We must keep time, you know. Gordon was speechless. Clouds of steam filled the air as Sir Handel huffed and puffed along the line. He was still cross when they reached the top station. Sir Handel was hoping for a rest, but his driver thought otherwise. We'll leave the coaches now and fetch some trucks from the quarry. Trucks! snorted Sir Handel. Trucks! I won't, so there! Sir Handel was about to cause a great deal of trouble. Told you, said Sir Handel. By the time the workman came to rescue him, Sir Handel was feeling rather silly. To make matters worse, there stood the fat controller. His message to Sir Handel was brief and blunt. I shall talk to you later. Then he and the fireman left with Peter Sam. Sir Handel felt sillier still. Come on, said his driver. Let's get you back on the rails. When Sir Handel crawled home, he found the fat controller waiting for him. You're a very naughty engine. I hope I can trust you to behave when you next come out of this shed. After hearing that, I'm sure Sir Handel will, aren't you? Every day where the little engines work, the crisp air is suddenly filled with a familiar noise. The lakes and mountains have many visitors, and Harold the helicopter flies the sky making sure that no one is in trouble. All present and correct, time to return to base. Then Harold noticed something. A sturdy diesel was coming round the mountainside. Harold flew lower for a closer inspection. I'm Harold. Who are you? I'm Rusty, replied the diesel. Don't recall seeing you before. What brings you this way? The fat controller sent me to help the other engines, huffed Rusty. This was no time for a chat with a helicopter. Well done. Cheers and keep up the good work. Chicky chopper, muttered Rusty. Not long now, encouraged the driver. We'll soon be at the top station. Peter Sam and Sir Handel were glad to see Rusty. Even so, Sir Handel wouldn't stop grumbling. The trucks didn't like Sir Handel and wanted to play tricks on him. No one understands our feelings, sympathised Gordon. Now, if you were ill, you couldn't shun trucks, could you? Good idea, replied Sir Handel. I'll try it. He did so next morning. I don't feel well, he groaned. There wasn't time to examine him, so some of his trucks were coupled behind Peter Sam's coaches. Rusty promised to follow with the rest. Peter Sam didn't mind the extra work. He left his coaches at the station and trundled cheerfully on. Soon, they reached the quarry where the trucks were needed. Empty trucks at the bottom of the slope are hitched to a steel rope. 
Loaded ones at the top are hitched to another. By their weight, loaded trucks run down the steep slope pulling the empty ones up. Peter Sam duly waited at the bottom of the slope for the loaded trucks. He never bumped trucks unless they misbehaved. But the loaded trucks couldn't see him properly. They thought he was a handle. The chance for trickery had come. Faster! Faster, they yelled. No, no, wailed the empty trucks. It's Peter Sam. But it was no use. Hurrah, hurrah, roared the trucks. Peter Sam shut his eye. Beep, beep, wailed Peter Sam. Rusty was working nearby and came to help clear up the mess. Boss, my buffers, exclaimed Rusty. Never mind, Peter Sam, we'll get you out. Peter Sam felt battered. His funnel was cracked and his boiler dented. Thank you, Rusty. He sighed and limped slowly home. I'm sorry about your accident, said Sir Handel. I always stand well back. Trucks don't like me. Why didn't you warn me? I didn't think. You never do. You can start thinking now while you're doing Peter Sam's work as well as your own. That'll teach you to pretend you are ill. Sir Handel did start thinking about Gordon. When the wreckage was cleared away, Rusty set off along the line. Splendid to see you again, whizzed Harold. I'm completing my evening's lookabout. Well done, replied Rusty. Keep up the good work. And the little diesel purred back home. It was a beautiful moonlit night on the island of Sodor. The day's work was done and all the engines puffed safely home. Thomas whispered Percy. Will you tell us the end of the story? You mean the one about Duke, the lost engine? Exactly, said Henry. But, added James, please remind us of the story so far. So Thomas began, and here is the rest of the story he told. Duke was old and lived with two young engines called Stuart and Falcon. They teased Duke and called him Grandpa, but they were happy together. Then, their line was closed down and the young engines went away. Duke was left alone in the shed. He went to sleep and everything around him changed. But Duke was never forgotten. Years went by until one day not long ago, Visitors came to see the Fat Controller. We want to find Duke, they said, and make him happy again. Maps lay everywhere. If we follow the old line shown here on the map, they said, we'll travel north of the village and then into the mountains. And look, there's a sign for the old station. If Duke's anywhere, he's there. Everyone set off to the mountains far away. The days went by and the search grew harder, but the rescuers wouldn't give up. Let's go this way, they said. But there was still no sign of Duke. Here somewhere, they said. They scrambled over hills and struggled over ditches. At last, their search ended.
quite by accident. We found him. We found our sleeping beauty. Excuse me, inquired Duke. Are you a vandal? Driver told me vandals break and smash things. Bless you, no, laughed the rescuers. We've dropped in because we couldn't find your door. Falcon and Stuart will be pleased to see you. So they did remember, sighed Duke happily. Then they all set off to Duke's new home. Stuart and Falcon were ready with a big welcome. He's here, they whispered. Shh, shh. You woke me up, grumbled Duke. In my young days, engines were seen and not heard, Grandpuff, we know. We'll all be back to work tomorrow. We're glad you've come back. We can keep you in order now. Keep me in order. Be off with you. Impudent scallywags, murmured Duke. But his old eyes twinkled, and for the first time in years, he smiled as he dozed in the sun. And that, said Thomas, is the whole story. Did you like it? Yes, indeed, agreed the engines, especially the happy ending. And soon they were all asleep, too. One morning, Percy was impatient. He was wearing a new coat of paint and longed for everyone to see it. The other engines were still dozing, but not Percy. Driver should be here by now. What's he doing? Sleeping, grunted Gordon. But that means I'll be late. The coaches will be waiting and the passengers will get cross. Rubbish, huffed Henry. It's still early, added James. You just want to show off. No, I don't. Never mind, Percy, said Thomas. It'll soon be time for work. But be careful or you might run into danger. And Duke is not here to save you. D -d Duke, stuttered Toby. You mean our hero? A large painting of Duke hung in the engine shed. The very same, said Thomas. Driver told me the story. Listen. And this is the story Thomas told them. Long ago, when Peter Sam was still called Stuart and Sir Handel Falcon, they worked with Duke on his old railway. But Falcon still had a lot to learn. The manager came to see him. Falcon, I'm pleased with your work so far. Now you must learn a difficult part of the line. We call it the Mountain Road. Falcon was excited. Yes, please, sir. So tomorrow, continued the manager, when you have a new coat of paint, you will go on it. Duke will explain everything. Huh, thought Falcon. Duke's an old fusspot. The next day came. Listen, warned Duke, the mountain road is difficult. I'll lead. No, replied Falcon, I'll lead. How can I learn the route with you lumbering ahead and blocking the view? Suit yourself, said Duke. But never mind the view, look at the track. The engine set off. Look at the track, buffed Duke. Never mind the view. Fosspot, fosspot. Replied Falcon. Fuddy doddy, fuddy doddy, fuddy doddy. The engine's speed grew slower and slower. Don't dawdle, don't dawdle, urged Falcon. No hurry, no hurry, puffed Duke. Soon they approached a tunnel. Falcon didn't like the tunnel, it was curved and he couldn't see. I want to get out, I want to get out, he sighed. One moment everything seemed safe, then suddenly... Falcon was derailed and hung dangerously over the edge. Duke bravely held on with all his strength. Stop shaking, he called. I can't hold you if you shake. Duke's driver and fireman were quickly to make the two engines safe again. 
Then came more trouble. Water! cried Duke's fireman. Duke needs water, quickly! Luckily, there was a workman's cottage nearby. Soon everyone was passing jugs, buckets, kettles and saucepans filled with water until Duke's thirst was quenched. All the while, Duke was building more strength. At last, with everyone's help, he was able to pull Falcon back onto the rails. Then, they started off once more. The manager was waiting at the top station. He apologised for the accident. Your Duke, said the passengers, is a hero. He stood firm like a bulldog and wouldn't let go. Falcon was grateful too. Thank you for saving me, Duke. I don't know why you bothered after I'd been so rude. Oh well, replied Duke. You just had a new coat of paint. It would have been a pity if you'd have rolled down the mountain and spoiled it. Thomas the tank engine puffed happily along his branch line with Annie and Clarabelle. The fat controller was waiting on the platform. He looked at his watch. Well done, Thomas. You are right on time and really reliable. Thank you, sir, whistled Thomas. Ooh, right on time and really reliable, hummed the coaches. But the big engines were not feeling cheerful at all. Where's Percy, mumbled Henry. He's supposed to fetch our coaches. We get no rest, complained James. Edged angrily onto the turntable and spoke rudely to Henry. What's the matter, Henry? There's no rain today. Stop worrying and do some work instead. I'm not afraid of getting wet anymore, huffed Henry. Anyway, you look silly enough to be a clown. You should be in a circus. Oh, whistled Percy, so you've heard the news. What news? grunted Gordon. About the circus. Percy, what are you talking about? The circus has arrived, explained Percy. I've been shunting special trucks. The fat controller needs your help too. The engine soon forgot to be tired and cross. Until it was time for the circus to leave. Then Gordon and Henry were cross all over again when James got to pull the train away. A little later, the fat controller returned. Come along, Henry. A tunnel is blocked down the line. You must take some workmen to investigate. <whistles> pushing trucks, pushing trucks, grumbled Henry. They stopped outside the tunnel. The workmen went inside. It was very dark and quiet, but not for long. Help! shouted the workmen, and they ran out. We started to dig at the block, but it grunted and moved, one said. Rubbish, said the foreman. It's not rubbish, it's big and alive. We're not going in there again. Right, said the foreman. I'll ride in the truck, and Henry shall push it out. Weesh! said Henry unhappily. He had been shut in the tunnel for being afraid of the rain, but this was worse. Something big and alive was inside. Beep! Beep! I don't want to go in. Neither do I, said his driver, but we must clear the line. Oh dear, oh dear, puffed Henry. Then there was trouble. The block was indeed alive and very strong. It began to push the train backwards. Out of the tunnel came Henry. Then the trucks. And last of all, a large cross elephant. Well, I never did, cried the foreman. The workmen gave him some cake. 
He drank three buckets of water and was just about to drink another when Henry let off steam. Oh! cried the elephant. Water went all over Henry. Poor Henry. The elephant and his keeper were soon reunited, but Henry was most upset. An elephant pushed me! An elephant pushed me! That night, he told the other engines all about it. Gordon and James felt sorry for Henry, but still teased him. First the rain, then an elephant. Whatever will you be afraid of next? Never mind, Henry, murmured Thomas. I think you were brave today and really reliable too. Thomas the Tank Engine was feeling very happy. His blue coat shone in the sun, he was right on time, and all around his branch line the countryside seemed prettier than ever before. Beep, beep! Good morning, Percy, he whistled. My branch line is the pride of the line, wouldn't you agree? Er, uh, yes, Thomas, of course, but... But what, Percy? Out with it. Well, there is another engine with a famous branch line, too. Who? Where? exclaimed Thomas anxiously. His name's Stepney. He's far away, but the fat controller says he may visit us. When? Oh, someday. And Percy hurried away. Meanwhile, Stepney was puffing purposefully along his line. It runs through fields and forests but isn't very long, which made him feel a little sad. Later, he saw Rusty. The little diesel had helped save Stepney from scrap. Everyone's been so kind, but my railway is so short and I do miss a good long run. I think you should tell Driver too, replied Rusty. I'm sure he'll understand. Stepney soon discovered that indeed he did. Do you know, Stepney, I feel just the same way. That evening, Stepney's driver had exciting news. Guess what, Stepney? The fat controller has invited us to visit the other engines on his railway. Manager agreed. It'll be a really long run to get there. Oh, thank you, sighed Stepney. They set off next morning. By now, all the other engines were talking about Stepney. He runs a famous branch line. Did you know that? said Percy. Thomas was feeling a little jealous. Huh, it may be famous, but my branch is first on the line. Everyone knows that, too. And he huffed away to fetch his coaches. Look, squeaked Percy. Why have they all come? There is no train yet. But Percy was wrong. The signal dropped them from far away, an engine whistled. Here he comes, yelled Douglas. Stepney puffed proudly through the junction. All the engines were pleased to see him. I hope you'll meet Thomas too, said Edward. You both have branch lines to be proud of. Then Stepney set off to help duck shunt coaches in the yards, and they worked happily together all afternoon. At last, Thomas arrived. Sorry, can't talk. It's time for my last branch line train. Mustn't be late. He was hardly out of sight when the engines heard shouting at the station. Moments later came the alarm. Stop all trains! The signal man answered the telephone. A special, is it? I see. Thomas was impatient. Why are we waiting? My passengers are being delayed. Sorry, Thomas, said his driver. We're being shunted to allow another train to pass. Soon, they heard an unfamiliar puffing sound. There was Stepney with headlamps swaying and whistle blowing. He gathered speed and disappeared. Well, bust my boiler, said Thomas the tank engine. Next morning, Thomas was still fuming. Shunted, and on my own branch too. It's a disgrace. I'm sorry, said Stepney. I was a special. Why? An important passenger arrived just as you left. 
He ordered a special train and Duck let me take it. We had a splendid run, but... But, finished Thomas kindly, it can make an engine nervous not to know the line. Exactly, said Stepney. You're such an expert. This made Thomas feel much better. He couldn't be cross anymore and instead began telling Stepney all about his branch line.